All right, so we're going to look at Gantt charts today, and we're going to look at sort of how we fill them out, how we use the rules uh, that we're given in order to fill those out, and then how we can sort of read them to decide who's going to be on our crew. Because remember, a Gantt chart is just about scheduling information and time. So we have this sample Gantt chart, uh, which has a fictional flight starting on January 10th from XNA to DFW, departing at 1016, arriving at 1139. And then the return flight from DFW to XNA uh, departs at 1540 and returns at 1658. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to fill out the hours for when this flight needs crew. So 1016 to 1139, come over here to 10 o'clock, 10 to 1015, 1015 to 1030. So there's our starting point, but something to remember is that our crew has to be ready to go an hour ahead of flight time. So instead of starting here at 1015, we actually have to start back here in the 916 bracket. So we come back, we get to 1139, which would be this marker right here. And the other thing to remember on crew scheduling is that they, in addition to being at the airport ready to go an hour ahead of the flight, they also have to remain for 30 minutes after the flight. So we're gonna add two extra squares. And we'll go ahead and we'll highlight that blue. Next up, our return flight, 1540 to 1658. We can come over here. And 1540 would be right here. But again, an hour ahead of time starts us here. So we'll come all the way down here. And we'll mark this one out. So this is our from an hour ahead of flight time to 30 minutes after flight time. So we have these two uh, bands that tell us when we need crew. So let's start looking at our crew. First up is our captains, and we have Captain Kirk, Captain Solo, and Captain Rogers. And these three are the ones we have to look at. So very first, we've got our seniority and our flight time. And these are the values that are also located in this chart that's provided down at the bottom. Um, let's give seniority, when their shifts can start, where they are, and their flight time again. So the first thing you should notice um, is that this 60 hours of flight time is going to contradict with our crew scheduling rules. So our crew scheduling rules say they must rest and not fly for 10 hours after their previous flight ended. Um, they cannot exceed 60 hours of flight time and the crew with the most seniority get the first trip. And if they're not available to fly, we just don't even mark them. So immediately we're violating this one. So we know that Captain Kirk cannot be our pilot. So we're gonna leave his row blank. Uh, next up, Captain Solo, 35 hours of fly time. That looks great. We're going to come down here. We're going to look at their availability. So their last shift ended January 10th at 0500, so 5 a.m. And the earliest their next shift can start is at 1500 hours. So if we come right up here, we find 1500 hours. Okay, it's right here which means that the earliest they can start would be this block right here. That's not going to work with any of our flights. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to leave them blank because they're not available to make this flight. Finally, we can look at Captain Rogers. 15 hours of flight time looks good. And we can check here. Their availability started January 10th at 0245. So we're okay there. So let's go ahead. We can mark in Captain Rogers as available for our flight. And we'll just do that by highlighting the correct times in green. Next up, we have to look at our first officers. So our first officers, we have Officer Crockett, Officer Starsky, and Officer Friday. And if we just look first at flight time, just to sort of knock out the easy crew scheduling rule, we notice that Officer Friday has 55 hours of flight time right now. If you look at our total value, remember every four boxes is a full hour. So we actually have one, two, three full hours, which means if you add this in, we have six full hours of flight time. Unfortunately, if we put Officer Friday on this, we're going to end up hitting 61 hours, which is a violation, again, of our maximum uh, hours in our crew scheduling rules. So Officer Friday won't be available. So let's look next. If we look down here, we notice that Officer Crockett has requested off January 10th through January 13th. Since our flight is on January 10th, that means that Crockett can't do it either. So let's look at Starsky. Starsky is available starting January 9th at 11. So the previous day, we got lots of time there and only has 31 hours, which means that absolutely they can take this flight. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to mark in Officer Starsky for our first officer on this flight. All right. Last up, we have to look at our flight attendants. Now, for our flight attendants, we actually have to have two flight attendants on this flight. So let's look and see who is available. So 
first things first, let's jump down here. Let's look at dates off. So we only have one set of dates off for uh, officer or attendant peck, um, and that's January 12th through the 15th. Now, that doesn't match up with our flight, so we can ignore that. So we have these four flight attendants, uh, attendant Smith, attendant Peck, attendant Baracus, and attendant Murdoch. Um, so let's look at availability. So they're available for the earliest next shift, January 8th, that's fine. January 9th, previous day, that's fine. January 10th at 1930. Well, if we look at that, that's January 10th, 1930 would be off here later than this. So we know that uh, attendant Baracus cannot be our flight attendant. Uh, attendant Murdoch is available January 9th, so the previous day at 1800. Um, so he's available as well. If we look at our hours, none of our hours are going to run into a crew scheduling problem. So let's figure out all of these can now theoretically work. So we're going to highlight all of them. And we're going to highlight each of the ones that is physically able to make the flight. Remember, a Gantt chart is just about seeing who is available to do something. It's not necessarily absolutely saying the people highlighted get the position, but these are just the people who are available to do the job. So in the end, after you fill out a Gantt chart using your information rules, you have to figure out who your crew is. So the captain and the first officer are real simple. They obviously have to be the one person who's available. So we obviously know we're going to go with Captain Rogers and Officer Starsky. Now, for our flight attendants, we have three possible choices, but we only need two of them. So this is a situation where you have to look at seniority. Uh, according to the crew scheduling rules, whoever has the most seniority are the first to get a trip. So if we look over at our seniority, we have seniority of two and a half, four, and five, which means that when we actually answer this question as to who our crew members are, we'll have Captain Rogers, Officer Starsky, and then we'll have flight attendants Peck, and Murdoch will be our two flight attendants because their four and five hours respectively is higher than attendant Smith's. So in the end, what you do is you'd move on and you'd write down who your crew is. But remember, these Gantt charts, they're just used to identify who's available to do something at a certain time. Now, this one's pretty simple because all of our crew members um, had something available and there was only one flight. But remember, these can get incredibly complicated over time, uh, depending on how many crew members. Obviously, a real airline has more than three pilots available and they're running more than one flight at a time. So just remember when you're filling these out, it's all about organization. It's seeing who is available to work. And then once you fill these charts out, you can use that data to decide who your actual crew is.